Welcome to the Color and Chaos podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. No matter how you found this, whether it's on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play Music Store, or on YouTube, the fact that you are listening or watching this is such an honor and a privilege. The whole heartbeat of Color and Chaos, if this is your first time being here, the whole heartbeat of Color and Chaos is that in the most difficult times of our life, in the chaos of our life, those are the moments that if we choose not to run away or to numb ourselves and get away from the uncomfortable and, the, and, and just the difficulty of those situations, if we can instead choose to lean into our Creator, Savior, Sustainer, who can bring such a color out of that and a growth out of that, we can find that in the chaos of our lives, there is so much color, there is so much good that could come from it. And I know looking back at my life and even just looking at my life even recently, just being able to see that it was in the moments of intense hardship, those are the moments that I grew the most because I wasn't leaning on myself, but I was leaning on my creator, savior, sustainer, who is living and active and pursuing after our hearts every single day. And so that's what Color and Chaos is. It's just a personal cry I, I've seen in my life. And it's a reminder that no matter what we go through, we have a God that wastes nothing. And it, even in the difficulties of our life, when we feel like the Lord is not there, sometimes in hindsight, we can look back and look back clearly and see, Lord, I, I can see you in those times. So that's what Color and Chaos is. And again, the fact that you are here is not by accident. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord wants to do with today's episode and what he wants to do in your life and in my life. I pray that this meets you in a real and relevant way. Let us pray. Lord God, just thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Lord, thank you so much for your patience with us. Thank you so much for your faithfulness with us, with me. Lord, thank you that you do not give up on us, even when we're going through the hardest of times. Lord, thank you that you are faithful to renew us day by day, and that you are faithful to make within us something so beautiful, even in the most difficult and painful times. So Lord, I just pray, we pray that you use today's episode to just grow us, to stretch us, to convict us, and to also bring us just closer to you, first and foremost. And so Lord, I pray for those listening or watching this, no matter what they are going through, what they have gone through, Lord, I just pray that they can know you more and that I can know you more as well. So Lord, just move me to the side and, and speak through this episode, and uh, please just grow us closer to you. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. Amen. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a big music fan. Ever since I was a little kid, uh, music has been one of those things that has helped grow me, to stretch me. Uh, music is something that helps me relax. Music is also something that challenges me and makes me think. I know apart from scripture, the Lord has used music huge in my life in order to grow my worldview, to stretch my worldview, and to help me see other people differently, see things um, through their eyes. It has grown me empathetically to be able to empathize with people, even though I may not have gone through the same life experiences or the same uh, culture, that music has been something so important to me. And I know that this last week, if you've been following music news or even just pop culture, um, recently there was something really big that happened. And I guess I, I say big in the sense of just the attention that it got. There's a man by the name of Kanye West. He's a musician. He's also um, an artist and just he, he does a lot of things. Um, he also makes sneakers. But uh, he's a really big deal when it comes to pop culture, even culture in general. We've seen Kanye in a lot of different ways. Kanye has uh, produced a lot of the, uh, the hit songs, a lot of the songs that we hear on the radio, a lot of uh, very influential songs, especially in the genre of, uh, of rap and hip hop. Uh, so Kanye has definitely had his, had his fingerprints on a lot of pop culture in the early 2000s. A lot of people may remember Kanye West as being someone who on national television uh, made a controversial statement about our president, Pre President George W. Bush, at that time by saying that he perceived George Bush as not caring about black people in the wake of the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. And so a lot of people were introduced to him by that. Also, a lot of people were introduced by um, his, his actions when the, uh, the MTV Music Awards were going on 
and there was a there was a woman named Taylor Swift who got an award for uh, the best music video of that year, and Kanye took the microphone away from her and uh, and proceeded to to tell the world and tell the audience about how he felt like someone else deserved that award. And I could go on and on about different things that that this man has been a part of that has been very well known and recognized in the in the whole world. That this is a man that we have literally seen through a lot of different stages of his life. And in a way, he's also been a part of a lot of our our lives as well. George W. Bush, I think around 2012 or 14, around that time, it was after George W. Bush's presidency uh, here in the United States. But I remember George W. Bush, he was asked, what was the most embarrassing part of your, your presidency? And he thought about it for a little bit, and and he replied to the interviewer. He he he, he stated it was it was after Hurricane Katrina and and Kanye West's statements about me not caring about black people, and he he mentioned that that was one of the most embarrassing times of his presidency. And so all that to say is that this man has has made an impact on a lot of people. But this last week, something very profound happened. And honestly, it's been something that's been happening for a while, but I feel like last week was kind of when a lot of the attention was put on him. But last week, he he released his newest album. To my knowledge, is the 11th studio album that he released. But he released an album named Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. This is a man who, who has been through so many things completely opposite of that statement. That, that that it would just seem like it's completely just like a 180. And, and in reality, kind of is. Recently, he went through a, as he declares, a, a transformation that he was born again, that he, that he came to know Jesus as Lord of his life. And so he released this new album on, on Friday and, and the internet went crazy. And depending on if you're in the internet or if you follow music news or pop culture or anything like that, um, then then you yourself might have noticed a lot of responses to this 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 crazy thing that happened. This this man who who went from literally just causing a lot of controversy and and just f- looking like it's just kind of spiraling out of control and just a lot of erratic behavior all of what, all of a sudden now to saying that he, he knows that he is created with a purpose and that that purpose is to let others know about Jesus being the Messiah, being the Savior that we long for. And so it's, it's just this crazy transformation that happened. But as I was just kind of observing and, and also just being a partaker of, of, of the, the music that he put out and, and just watching interviews and just being able to uh, just, just be observant of what's going on in this man's life, I noticed a lot of different responses to Kanye's public declaration of Jesus being Lord. So what I wanted to do today in today's episode is to share with you some lessons, some some things that I feel like the Lord has been showing me through this very recent public just conversion of a man who went from <laughs> denying Christ with his actions to now declaring Jesus as Lord and 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 perceiving a lot of fruit from that. And so that's what I wanted to do with today's episode is just kind of walk through some of the observations that I've noticed and and before you kind of maybe tune this out because you're like, okay, I don't know what this has to do with me. I, I feel like a lot of this has to do with, with all of us. That what we are literally watching right now when it comes to this man named Kanye West is that we're, we're, we're also seeing a spotlight into ourselves by a lot of the responses that have been made with this man's decision. One of the things that come to my mind with, with things that I feel like the Lord has been showing me from, from, this, from this man's decision to follow Christ is that we're very quick to tell other people and to declare what the, the miracles that the Lord is doing in our life. But when it comes to the Lord doing miracles in other people's lives, we're, we're very quick and we're very prone to doubt. We're very prone to be skeptical. We're very prone to judge, to be questioned. We're just very prone to just doubt what the Lord may be doing in somebody else's life. But we're very quick 
to say what the Lord has been doing in our life. And that's something that 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 has been standing out to me, especially on social media. I've I've just noticed a lot of people being very quick to just call out the fact that, oh, I don't know his intentions, or I don't know if he's being very sincere in this, or you know, I, I know what he said and everything, but I'm I'm you know, I, I'm I'm kinda, you know, being hesitant to to believe that this is something very serious that is that has happened within him and and not just a public stunt. And and I've just seen a lot of comments and and chances are you you yourself may maybe have have seen some comments like this and stuff. But one of the things that I thought about pretty quickly after seeing this this public just testimony of 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 Kanye just declaring that Jesus is Lord and and sharing what the Lord has been doing in his life and the transformation that has been going on in his life. One of the verses that came to my mind is 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3. And I feel like so often we as followers of Christ can definitely miss out on the reality of the scripture. And in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3, Paul says something very profound. And if we fail to understand this, we can very quickly go down the path of judging one another. But this is what Paul says. He says this, Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons why we are skeptical of one another, especially when there has been transformation that has happened in somebody's life, is because we know people or, or we have known about people who have said one thing but did another, right? We've all known hypocrites. And, and the reality is, is that we all will know a hypocrite because we ourselves are hypocrites. I could be the chief of hypocrites at many times. I could say one thing and truly believe it, but not really act out upon it. And I know I've been guilty on that. And I know I've seen different times in my life where, where people have called me out for being that hypocrite, for me saying one thing, but not really following up on what I'm saying. And so we as people, we know how hypocritical that we can be. So, so sometimes it's, it's, it's very easy to, to look at others through that lens of hypocrisy of saying, like, I, 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 I rather see fruit before I, I, I accept you as, as being, being someone who has really changed. But, but when I go back to this verse by, by saying that it, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God, I'm reminded and I'm being reminded that whenever somebody says Jesus is Lord or Jesus is King or, or Jesus is, is God, when, whenever somebody says that, there is so much more going on behind the scenes that sometimes we give credit to. And who are we to look at somebody and say, oh, well, I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm very hesitant to, to believe you when the reality is, as this verse says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. We are as people. We as people, whether you are a follower of Christ or, or not a follower of Christ, we as people are so quick to judge, but so slow to praise. We waste so much time. I have wasted so much time trying to discern where somebody is in their walk with Jesus. When, when God has given me that time to accept for discerning and, and making a judgment based on somebody, to instead to, to spend that time and live it out, to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, to, to speak life into one another, instead of speaking skepticism or criticism or judgment on one another. At the end of the day, I am very thankful that when I went through my own 180, the, the, the moment that I realized that, that this life isn't just about me, but that I've been created by a creator that has a name and that name has power and that name saves and that name, Jesus, he is living and active that he defeated death and he took on the wages of my sin, which is death on the cross. And he suffered death so that I don't have to stay dead in my sin and my rebellion towards God. And at the moment that I realized that, there was a transformation that happened within me that no longer was I defined by my sin, but I was instead born again in my Savior. That, that my life was, was, was forgiven, was pardoned. That my sins were washed as white as snow. 
And I was given the Holy Spirit. I was given the Spirit of God to dwell within me because I was made pure through the Son and His sacrifice. The moment that that happened in my life, I am so thankful that people around me were very quick to encourage and to give me opportunity to, to start to discover the gifts that God has given me and, 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 and to give me an opportunity to start to walk out this faith, walk out this new life that I had in Christ. I am so thankful that people were quick to encourage me and, and instead that I didn't have to go through intense judgment, intense criticism and skepticism. I'm so thankful. I was just thinking about this the other day. As soon as I gave my life to Christ at, at 17 and, and I came to know Jesus as Lord and, and his spirit brought me to repentance, as soon as that happened, I got plugged into many churches, two different churches, actually. I got plugged into one church. I got plugged into another church. I just wanted to get plugged in. I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I was like a baby. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I, I was reading the Bible. I was growing in my understanding of, of who the Lord was in the, in the Word of God and, and who I was in the Word of God. But I know during that time, there was many things that I, 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 I must have said or done that, that went against His Word, that went against His desire for my life. There's many things in my ignorance I, I maybe did, you know, things that I maybe meant well, but it wasn't really, it wasn't really executed well. And I'm so grateful that people came alongside me to help me, to mentor me, to walk me alongside me, to give me grace, to, to have mercy on me as I was just this little kid trying to figure out this new relationship with a living God and to walk in the giftings that God has given me. I'm so thankful that people were patient with me that people were kind to me when, when I made mistakes and when I, when I misspoke and, and mis, misquoted scripture, that they came alongside me in, com in, in just calmness and, and, and kindness in order for me not to get discouraged, but instead to feel encouraged to continue to walk and to get to know this, this, this Lord that has set me free and the spirit of God that was working in me day in and day out. I'm so thankful so thankful that there was others around me that, that noticed that even in my shortcomings, that the Lord was working in my life. And my heart goes out to Kanye because I, I see so many people being so quick to judge, but this is not fair. It's not fair. We have been forgiven of much. I have been forgiven of much. And if we're quick to judge one another, then why do we get upset when people judge us, quick to judge us? And through this, I've just been reminded that it's truly by the Spirit of God that we could call Jesus Lord. So who are we? Who are we to look at what the Spirit of God can be doing in somebody's life and, and, and say, I, I doubt that? The reality is, is that over time, we will see, we will see good fruit from the Spirit of God working in one another's life. May we not be quick to judge, but maybe be quick to encourage and to, and to just, just hold the hand of those around us that are new to this or growing in this. And when they fall, to pick them up, to encourage them, to say, look, we have a God that is faithful to you as I know he has been faithful to me. <laughs> We're so quick to say and declare the miracles that the Lord is doing in our, life, in our life, but may we also be quick to praise the Lord for the miracles that we observe in other people's life, even if we may be skeptical of what the Lord is doing. One of the things I've also been, been just being reminded of is that the Lord is working in ways that, that blow our mind. Sometimes we, we can look at somebody and think that the Lord's not working, but we have no idea what the Lord is doing behind the scenes. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. And especially when it comes to platforms, when it comes to Hollywood or, or artists or musicians or influencers, sometimes we, especially because of the spotlight, we can see so many faults within that person that maybe we're observing. And it, and it, it makes sense why we may be quick to judge somebody. But at the end of the day, they are human. They are people. And the Lord is working in their lives, just like the Lord is working in your life and working in my life. And sometimes it's, it's behind closed doors that the Lord is doing the most work that nobody else may see. 
And when things happen, like what happened with Kanye, and, and all of a sudden we start to see this pivot within him of, of just this transformation, and, 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 he, and he's starting to declare things that he never declared before, and he's starting to, to do things that he never did before, and he's starting to just start to have a platform that maybe he never had before. We're, we're, we're starting to see this. But in reality, there's things going on behind the scenes. And me being a music nerd, I know that I, I, I've seen a lot of artists through the years, both before I was born and, and even current day now. But I've noticed a lot of people with the spotlight on them. This isn't the first time that somebody has had 180 and has declared Jesus as Lord. And it's also not the, not the first time that people have been skeptical of that. My attention immediately went to Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, a famous just musician and songwriter. A lot of people have declared Bob Dylan as, as a voice of a generation, especially during the 70s and the 60s. Bob Dylan was very influential. He had a, a very big platform and, and a platform that, that Bob Dylan himself ha has said that it was not centered around Christ. If anything, it was centered around the opposite. It was centered around what people thought of him or, or his influence or, or his notoriety. And I've always been fascinated by Bob Dylan because Bob Dylan is an example of someone who had a 180 and a lot of people doubted and had skepticism in what the transformation that the Lord did in his life. To the public's eyes, it just kind of happened randomly. But in reality, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And so I wanted to share a little bit of this interview with a man that helped lead Bob Dylan to the Lord. And, and the, name, the name of the man is, is Al Kasha. Al Kasha was a, a Messianic Jew that, that he started a Bible study in his house. And I wanted to read a little bit about this. And, and the reason that I want to share this with you is because I've just been reminded that we have to be very careful to not ignore the fact that we have a God that pursues after us, even when we feel like the Lord may not be pursuing after that person. Maybe you who is listening or watching this, maybe there's somebody in your life that you feel like is a lost cause that you have just observed a lot of destruction, a lot of hurt, a lot of brokenness within their life. And maybe you yourself have, have started to feel like, Lord, I, I don't think you could do anything anymore. I think they're too far gone. But I just want this to encourage you that none of us are too far gone. That if we are breathing right now, that the Lord can do a work and a wonder in their life. Just like I know the Lord has done a work and wonder in my life. And so we are not too far gone. And so I want to read this as a, as a reminder that there, there's so much going on behind the scenes that we may not know about, but that the Lord is constant and living and active and pursuing after our hearts, regardless if we can see him moving in a person's life or not. So this is what Al Kasha says. He says this, We had them all coming along to my home Bible study, and that would include struggling actors and actresses, singers and dancers, but also these big stars as well. He went on to say, at that time, there was no place for them to go, so we would try to solve some problems that they were facing that were biblically based. He then went on to talk about Bob Dylan, who he said had been told about this Bible study by some friends who had shared about this Jewish man who is now teaching about Jesus. He came to my house every week for about six months. In fact, he wrote the album Slow Train Coming in our house during that time. Bob was, at that time, going through a spiritual search, and if you look at his track record as a writer, he was always seeking after Jesus, and he finally realized that Jesus was his Savior. Kasha said that the night that Dylan prayed the sinner's prayer with him, he was with his friend called Clark Matthias and his wife, Seal. I asked Seal if she can remember what happened, and she replied, I sure do, like it was yesterday. There was an amazing warm feeling in our home and in our hearts. And Dylan just opened up and said, after Al Kasha had asked him if he wanted to receive Jesus into his life, Bob Dylan just opened up and said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And that was that. Al Kasha then added, and he wrote this entire album, Slow Coming Train, in front of our fireplace. Kasha said that Bob Dylan was baptized after his conversion in Santa Monica near Malibu by people from the Calvary Chapel affiliated church. And so the interviewer goes on to say this. He says, so is Bob Dylan a believer? I ask him again. The answer is yes, he said firmly. And I think the world doesn't like to see someone like him being a believer because he'll bring many people to the Lord, which he's already done. 
And, and this interview just stands out to me just because based on what we just read in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, that it's only by the Spirit of the Lord that we can even declare Him as Lord. But it stands out to me that, that so often we fail to see things through the eyes of Christ. At the end of the day, we, it's not our place to know who is a follower of Christ and who isn't a follower of Christ. That, that through time, their actions, our actions should show who we follow whether we follow the living Savior or we follow ourselves and our desires in this world that is, that is dead and decaying, that through time our actions will show the fruit. Yes, absolutely. Even, even James says in, in James 1.22, he says this, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. And even Jews in the, in the Old Testament time, they, they understood this, that, that understanding the law wasn't just to know the law, but it was to live it out. I'm reminded of many passages, but I'm reminded of Psalms 143 and verse 1 and verse 2. David says this, hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my plea. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. Don't put your servant on trial for no one is innocent before you. I'm also reminded of James 4, verse 11 to verse 12. He says this, Brothers and sisters, do not slander anyone. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but you are sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? At the end of the day... This is not saying not to be observant of one another and their behavior and and to encourage one another for their behavior to line up with the God that they claim to follow. This It's not saying not to do that. At the end of the day, may we see one another through the eyes of Christ. And the way that the Lord saw one another, we see it all throughout the scripture. But one of the examples is the way that the Lord saw even Peter. One of the greats, as Paul said, Peter was called to the Jews to declare to them that the Messiah has come. So Peter was very important. Jesus even told Peter that upon you, that I will build my church. Peter was the very first person after Pentecost, after the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Peter was the very first person to preach a sermon and to call people to come to the Savior. And thousands of people were, were, were transformed that day through the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter is very important. But Jesus, we see his interactions with Peter. And, and Peter, Peter made a lot of mistakes. We see in Scripture that Jesus didn't just see Peter as he was, but he saw Peter as who he can become. He saw the potential within Peter. And he always used every moment as an opportunity to remind Peter of his potential. Jesus easily could have just, just told Peter, look, like these are the issues that you have. And these are the skepticisms that I have towards you, Peter. Peter, I know you're very quick to say you'll follow me, but I'm, but I'm, I'm very skeptical of that because right now I'm not observing that. But instead, no, we see that, that Jesus always was honest with Peter, but it was always by speaking truth into him saying, Peter, I know what I want to do within you. And there's a process and I'm faithful to you in this process. May we look at others as being faithful to them in their process, just like Christ has been faithful to Peter and faithful to us in our processes as well. He saw who he would make Peter into. May we also see one another. And instead of being quick to judge them, may we start to dream and to start to see, Lord, help me see what you want to do in this person's life and help me be a a, a tool that you can use in order to help encourage and to strengthen my brother or sister as you are transforming them and renewing them, as the Bible says, day by day by day. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 goes with this, this idea of encouraging one another and to be an ally in what the Lord wants to do within them. And this is what Paul says. He says this, so encourage one another and build each other up just as you already are doing. Encourage one another, build one another up. May we as people be quick to build one another up instead of being quick to judge. At the end of the day, John 10, 10 reminds us, Jesus says that, look, I have come to give you life and life abundantly, but there is a thief and he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. If we have an enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy, may we not be 
the, the instrument of the enemy to still kill and destroy, but instead, may we encourage one another, as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, may we encourage one another, build each other up, and may that be the way that we view one another, saying, Lord, help me. Just no matter what I observe in this person's life, help me encourage them and build one another up, speaking truth into their life and helping them know that, look, right now you may not see what the Lord has planned in your life, but I want to, I want to speak life into your life by saying, look, the Lord has so much more planned for you than maybe what you are settling on right now. There is such a bigger picture than sometimes what we focus on. And just like that, what's going on in Kanye West's life? Who are we to judge his intent or his motives. Who are we to judge? We do not know what the Lord is doing, but instead may we praise the Lord for what we can see that he is doing. The reality of it is, is that there is a man who's declaring Jesus is Lord and he is using his platform to do that. That is awesome. That is praiseworthy. May we pray for our brother. May we pray for him and to ask the Lord, please have mercy, please help him. Please help him, put people around him to encourage him, to strengthen him. Help him have a teachable heart, a humble heart. Help him be quick to, to, to repent. Help us as people be quick to repent. Help us work alongside one another, realizing that we are in this together. And Lord, we all are on the same playing field because we all need you so desperately bad. And we are nothing without you. That apart from you, we wouldn't even be able to call you Lord. May we encourage one another and build each other up, looking at one another through the eyes of Christ and not through the eyes of brokenness. Because when we look at others through our eyes of brokenness, we will always see brokenness. We will always be skeptical of good. And even in scripture, that there is many times where there is questions on people's motives and there's, there is, there's questions on people's intentions. And Paul in Philippians 1 verse 12, and I'll end with this, Paul in Philippians 1 verse 12, he says this, as he's writing to the Philippian church, talking about what the Lord has been doing and what he's been observing. And he says this, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. But then he goes on to say this, verse 14, and because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. At the end of the day, to you that is listening or watching us, or to me that that is speaking right now, may we, whenever somebody declares Jesus is Lord, no matter whatever their motives are, no matter what's going on behind the scenes, may we praise the Lord because at the end of the day, his truth and his name is being declared from the vessel and the life of the person that is speaking. Kanye has been reminding me that when I look at the Bible, I see the Davids. I see the Pauls, I see the Peters, I see the Moseses, I see the Rahabs, I see the Marys and the Josephs, I see the James, I see the Johns. Every single mighty woman and man in the scripture were people that the Lord did a work and a wonder within, that the world would have looked at and said, look, you are worthless. But the Lord looked at them and gave them a new name, gave them an identity, said, no, 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 you are exactly the person that I want to use in order for people to know me and to understand that I am after your heart. If the Lord can use a murderer of Christians, he can use a Kanye and he can use a me and he can use a you. That we have a God that makes messes matter and he makes the broken beautiful heavy heart, no matter what you are going through, no matter what people around you are going through, may we be quick to praise a God that is mighty to save, 
and is faithful to work within us even when everybody else may give up on us. You are not a lost cause. May we never look at others as being a lost cause as well. May we learn from one another. May we have a humble heart to be taught even from people that we may have never imagined that we would be taught by. Let us pray. Lord God, just thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for what you're doing in Kanye, Lord, and the, and the fact that you have, you have led him to repentance and that he is declaring you and, 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 and being a, a student of your word and, and striving to live that out. Lord, at the end of the day, that Lord, we praise you. We thank you. Lord, I know that I have been blessed by the music that he has been putting out recently of, of just declaring your truths, Lord, and it's in agreement with your word. What else can I ask for? What else, what else, what else can we celebrate? Lord, that is awesome. That is awesome. May we as a people, as a church, come alongside Kanye's and, and people that, that have come from death to life, knowing that we ourselves have come from death to life. And Lord, we are all in this together. Lord, help us. Help us look through eyes of grace and mercy and love and truth and not look through eyes of skepticism or hostility or confusion. Lord, help me see things through your eyes. Help us see things through your eyes. Help us encourage one another. Help us be just a, a support for one another. Lord, we have an enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Lord, help us, help us, help us, help us not be a part of that, of that robbery, of that, of that murder, and of that destruction, Lord. We need you so bad, and we're in this together. Lord, I pray that you continue to grow Kanye. Please continue to put people around him that, that help him just know his worth and his identity that is in you and you alone, not in what other people say about him or not even in his gifts or talents. And Lord, I pray for those that are listening or watching this, that, that maybe they can relate to that. Maybe, maybe they themselves have been placing their identity and their gifts and their talents or what other people have said about them or even what they think about themselves. But Lord, we pray in your name, Lord, set us free. Please help us realize that who we are is, is not who we think we are or who what other people say about us. But Lord, who we are is who the creator says that we are. And you call us your beloved. You call us your son and daughter. Lord, you are after our heart and you have offered us the gift of salvation, of freedom from our death and decay of a, a life that is a slave to ourselves and our desires. Lord, thank you for setting us free through what you have done on the cross. Help us seek after you with everything. Convict our hearts in ways that we are not seeking after you. Help us be genuine in our pursuit after you and help us be genuine in our love for one another. Help us be patient with one another. Help us be merciful and graceful towards one another. Help us come alongside one another and encourage one another. Lord, we need you and we need each other. Lord, we are in this together. Break our heart for what breaks yours and give us a joy and a praise that is on our lips. Help us always be quick to praise you for what you have done and what you are doing, even when we can't see it. And we thank you for the life transformation that you are doing, even within people that we we could never have imagined that you would work through. We need you, Lord. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much for listening or watching this. I would love to continue the conversation with you. And I just pray that this encourages you and strengthens you wherever you may be at. We're in this together. God bless you. Look forward to talking to you next week. See ya.